Hi, I'm Mari Vestasevsky. I'm an artist, researcher, writer, investigator. Uh, my work blurs the line between these fields deliberately. I focus on issues of systemic failure, international conflict profiteering, and the information vacuum that surrounds these issues. For me, uh, uh, the end goal of um, finding an absolute answer and the truth is secondary to finding out how information about certain subjects, certain case study works. So I try different forms of asking questions, different forms of forming inquiries. When I started first to do research, I've been um, incredibly frustrated by not always getting the answers. And I felt like, okay, well, this is two months that I have just lost. And uh, I started to think about whether it is actually lost time or whether I'm mapping answers as to what is being secret and where are the doors that cannot be opened are and where are the curtains that cannot be lifted are. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought that it would be also important for me to include in my final um, outcome, in my final work, uh, the failed questions, the questions to which I did not get answer to. Knowing how to pull out queries and extract uh, things on the internet and be active in terms of searching for answers mapping the initial work done by other researchers and uh, asking state authorities to in exchange and engage with you prior to going and speaking to people. For one, it's important in order for you to formalize the questions that you're going to ask. If you don't speak to sources in the field, there is many ways in which you may feel that you have interpreted the documents and the information you received correctly, the data you're looking at correctly, but the day-to-day -day nuance of operations within companies, of exchanges between states, of uh, what people wear to work, if you like, of, of how it, it works, it informs the data that you find a lot by context. I get more freedom with not having to adhere to strictly journalistic line of interviewing people. So I can have a conversation with someone and I can wait for them to get back to me. A lot of the sources would demand uh, that we only speak in person, which makes things very, very difficult. A lot of the people would end up giving you answers as a way of proving you wrong, which I find it really interesting. And uh, at often times, of course, I don't get the response, which is a response in itself, uh, as it's identified this black space, which, which cannot be accessed. Another uh, way of accessing interviews and accessing relevant information have been for me uh, working as a researcher or ending up in a situation where, uh, and this is the paradox, ending up in a situation where the access to information is tremendous, but you can only get this access by signing a non-disclosure or by agreeing to non-disclosure. On the long run, it helps me to understand other testimonies and context that helps me to cross-reference other testimonies. But ethically, I find it very conflicting and I still haven't made up my mind as to how to proceed in this case. I've recently started working with the uh, Dodge designer uh, Last as a way of visualizing information, documents and sources. And I found uh, this fluent synergy uh, that you reach by just discussing ideas where uh, when you reach something perfect, you're not quite sure whose idea it was. It really just happened when you merged this flow and amid a lot of people where ideas happen. And while I reserve some of, uh, some of my work, some of the decision making behind my work to myself and the responsibility for, for making that decision for myself alone, um, I find that working with, with different collective, working with hackers, working with designers, working with researchers is actually um, good for us and good for crossing the bridges between different fields. I'm going to disappoint you, but I've never really been able to answer the question of how it is for me to navigate these places as a woman, because I frankly have nothing to compare it to. There's a lot of surprises in terms of access. Sometimes I think I'm never going to get there. 
and then I do get them. And sometimes I think, okay, I'm just going to send them an official letter asking for a photograph and it will be fine, as was the case with Siemens, and I get completely stonewalled. And as the case was with the Ukrainian expert department, uh, they let me linger for three weeks and I thought, okay, if I'm going to get an interview with someone, it's going to be a low-level state official. Uh, and uh, if they're going to make me... If they're going to permit a photograph, it will probably be at the lobby. So what happened is they responded to me in three uh, weeks. And I feel like for a moment, I, I think in that context, at least for a moment, they got the upper hand. They played the same, they, they, they played by my own rules. And uh, they invited me to the head office cabinet. And there was uh, 14 men, all in high position of the expert control. It was a round table, and it was glass for me with the water. They all sat down in front of me. These are all um, ex-intelligent agents, uh, uh, various PM uh, economists uh, in their late 50s, uh, quite acquainted with answering questions in a PR sort of way. Uh, they all sat down in front of me. I sat across from them, and for a moment I felt like, okay, I am here to interrogate them, where in fact I feel like, the subject, and uh, it was very interesting that they've um, allowed that level of access. And this is also something I photograph. If you look at the photograph of the expert control, you can see my little bottle on the side of that table. And they answered my questions, and uh, at the end of the interview, <laughs> they've given me a medal from the expert control for investigating the expert control.